Yeah, there's still a little bit of snow up here in God's front porch in the mountains. But it is raining today. The weather's supposed to go up in terms of temperature, and sooner or later, it's going to be springtime. Uh, I, you know I love winter. But when we get close to the opening day of trout season, when the PGA Tour swings around to Augusta and the Masters, uh, we were, we're past the final four. That's when I've had enough winter, and it is time to put the sweaters and jackets away and to start enjoying some springtime, for which I am also looking forward. I wanted to pull a reflection from a gentleman by the name of Father Billy Swan. Billy Swan is from the Diocese of Fern. Ferns is on the east coast of Ireland. He has an interesting past. He was a chemistry major, and later he went into the priesthood, studied at the Gregorian in Rome, and received his licentiate in theology. So he has this really great interest in combining faith and reason and uh, religion and science. And he looks on the example of St. Patrick through the lens of the contemporary society in Ireland. And he weeps a little bit for his country. The secularization in Ireland has really increased and the demise of the Catholic Church there has been absolutely stunning. There are many reasons for it. We could parallel those in, in the United States as well. But he said that St. Patrick came to Ireland in a time that looks very much like today. And in that regards, he said, how did he do what he did? Why was he so successful? And Father Swan gives three reasons. The first one is Patrick knew who he was and Patrick knew what he was. He was a child of God. And when you're a child of God, that means you are sent on a mission. If you are baptized and you're saying, well, I'm not really an apostle, as Sherry Waddell says, too late. That's already the case. And so we're sent on mission. But it's not our project. It's God's project. And so we have to realize that we cannot simply sit back and do nothing. We are called to go into Berwyn, Chester County, Archdiocese of Philadelphia, greater world, and somehow to bring that message of Jesus Christ to other people. But also to remember that it's not our project. And therefore, it's very necessary for us to check in with the Holy Spirit. That brings us to the second point, and it's this. Confidence in the gospel. I can't tell you how many times in the midst of somewhat, if not heated, somewhat passionate discussions, arguments with other people who do not hold a position that the Catholic Church holds, I'll just quote a gospel verse, and it silences them. Part of that might be spiritual warfare. Part of that might be touching and softening of their hearts. All of it is the fact that the Word is not just pages on a book. When we quote the Word, it is as if Jesus Christ himself is sitting there and speaking because he is. That's what we believe. And so in that regard, it's really important that we focus on some familiarity of the scriptures and connect the words of the scriptures to the various policies and projects and issues of today. And in this regards, that will help us get over some of the apprehension that we have when we start reading about the scandals in the Catholic Church uh, put out there by the media and think that we should be silenced. No, we shouldn't. Go out there, have the confidence in that word, and, and go out and, and preach the word. That brings us to the third thing, and it's an, and I think it's the strongest point of uh, Father Billy Swan's uh, article. You can't evangelize a culture that you don't love. 
That's a real challenge. There might be policies, there might be people, there might be subcultures that you just don't like or they may be practicing things that, about which you do not approve. But if you can't find a way to connect with them, talk with them, sit with them, and much like St. Patrick, uh, love them, or in the definition of wishing what is best for them, you will never be able to evangelize them and your message will never get through to them. Uh, what we're talking about here is something that I've seen very much in priests and pastors and their parishes. Here's an example. Um, Father George Hagenbach. Uh, I knew Father George when I was in the clergy office. And many people in St. Monica, when they talk about Father Hagenbach, say something along the lines of, well, Father Hagenbach was quite a character. He certainly was. Father Hagenbach drove me crazy sometimes. But let me tell you one thing about him. There was no doubt that he loved this parish and that he was incredibly fond of the people of St. Monica. He fell in love with this parish very early and it was his great, great love throughout all of his priesthood. And that's the way most priests and pastors are when they go from one assignment to another. It, it becomes very easy to fall in love with the people. And in that regards, we end up practicing something that Father Swan calls holy mercy. We call them to a better and a higher good. That's the holiness. But on the other side, there's that sense of mercy where we walk with them on their journey. We do not chastise them. We get to know them, and in that knowledge, we get to love them for their strengths as well as well as, well as their weaknesses. Uh, I've linked his article to uh, this Porch to Mark, Porch Talk. I ask you to pray for Ireland, as he does. Pray for these United States. I spoke recently about the country of Germany. Pray for them. Pray for all of those countries that were such solid Christian nations and yet have fallen away. But also pray for the fact that there are lots of Patricks and lots of Bridgets out there that are going to take that gospel and love the people around them, and they're going to see great miracles in the way that the gospel takes root in the lives and hearts of other people.